Hi, it's Doug from Ryan's Above Performance Training. Today I want to talk about the posterior chain. So you might have heard coaches or parents or even other strength coaches talking about uh, increasing the strength in the posterior chain to help you become a better athlete. So I want to kind of give a brief example of um, some exercises you do to strengthen this posterior chain, what it is, and then how to stretch it as well. So the posterior chain just commonly refers to the muscles of the back side of the body. And in particular for sporting, we're talking about the back side of the legs. A little bit of core for sure, um, in conjunction with everything, but mostly the hamstring muscle, collective group here, and the glute muscles, and all the rotator muscles within the glutes. Some include the calf as well. The reason why these muscles are so important, uh, they help increase starting strength. So anytime I'm gonna start sprinting, these muscles, the hamstrings and the glutes, they'll hip extend. The hamstrings also bend the leg to help assist in running. The other thing that's very important um, is also deceleration movements. So when we're playing sports and we go to stop, the posterior chain muscles actually slow our body down so we can either change directions, put on the brakes or back pedal, and also takes the stress off the knee. If I go to stop and my posterior chain isn't strong enough, I'll get some anterior shearing on the front of the knee and you can have injuries or even worse rotational injuries can blow out an ACL or an MCL or even tear a meniscus. So it's very important to have these muscles strong for sports. So now I'm going to show a few, I don't want to say unconventional necessarily, but maybe some of the le least common um, exercises that I like to use to strengthen the posterior chain. There's obviously deadlifts and squats. Those are great ones. I'm not going to show those because um, they're all over YouTube. But what I'm going to show is a few uh, different ones that you can add in there that are relatively safe and strengthen the chain up really well. So let's see, get into it. So the first exercise we're going to do for the posterior chain is a good morning. Now you can do a good morning in a few ways. You can have a bar on the back. And it's basically a Romanian deadlift with the weight up high. So we're going to have pushing back to get the hamstring stretch, driving the hips and heels through the floor to get all this posterior chain. I'm going to show you how to do it with a sandbag. I like the sandbag. Um, one of the reasons is for the unstable weight. It gets a little bit more core activation. Number two, it's not on our back. Um, some inexperienced athletes just kind of learning how to do strength and conditioning. The bar on the back is uncomfortable. Also, if you have young athletes, you don't want to compress the spine too much, this is a much better way to do that. We're going to hold the weight in the crooks of the arms, keeping the weight close to the front of our body. There's also a component of the core where we have to kind of keep our um, chest lifted to keep that core strong, keep the weight from pulling us over and bending our back. So I'm going to bring the bag up to me. I'm going to hold it up here, lock it in. I'm going to keep my feet about shoulder width apart. You can go a little bit uh, narrower or wider depending on how you feel. I'm going to bend my knees slightly. And what I think about when I'm going down is not bending over, but pushing my butt back behind me. So I'm going to keep pushing back. My head is neutral. My hips don't drop. When I feel stretch in the hamstrings right about there, squeeze, drive through my hips, and come back up. The second exercise I'm going to show you for the posterior chain is the barbell bridge. I'm really starting to like this one a lot because um, you can really use a lot of weight and it's relatively safe once you get this set up down. So I just took a barbell here. I recommend getting a pad and a squat pad. You don't use this for squats, but you can use it for barbell uh, hip bridges. I'm just going to put this in the middle just so it rests on my hips and it doesn't hurt me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lie down roll the barbell over so it's right on the hips um, on my iliac crest just above the uh, vital area so I don't hurt myself there. I'm going to take a second and adjust me right in the middle. Then I'm just going to do a normal bridge. I'm going to have my feet on the ground. I'm going to bend them wherever I feel like I can get the most power. I'm going to just stabilize the bar just enough so it doesn't rock around too much. Pull my shoulders back, tighten my butt. And I'm going to go really slow on the first one, but I'm going to tighten my hips and drive with my glutes and heels through the floor. I feel off a little bit, so I'm going to shift to the right. I'll do a couple more for you.
So this one you'll probably feel up high in the hamstring at the attachment um, just and around the glutes a little bit. I have seen people do it on the bench and I've done it with the bench with the shoulders on the bench getting a little bit more range of motion. The setup for yourself is going to be a little bit harder if you want someone to hand it to you. Um, and also the starting on the floor is a good beginner's way to kind of get going and get used to doing these bridging type of movements. So the last one I'm going to show you today is a single leg variation. I really enjoy uh, training single leg and I think it's important in a lot of athletes um, Train programs because you know both legs are going to be a little bit different. Uh, sports like soccer, you're playing on one leg a lot, using the other leg. Basketball, you're jumping on one leg, and the other leg's going to be a little more on the active side of things. So balancing them out is very important for uh, strength, speed, but also injury prevention. So this is a single leg movement. What I'm going to have to uh, show you guys is an elevated front foot elevated lunge. I call it. The reason why I'm going to have a front foot elevated. It's going to target that posterior chain in that front leg a little bit more. So with my front foot elevated, you can see I can drop my hip below my knee pretty well. That's going to fire these muscles, the posterior chain muscles of the glute and hamstring, and I'll be able to drive up. It's not a huge range of motion, but I'm able to, like I said, get these muscles going. If I did a normal lunge, it's hard for me to get past parallel without really maybe extending my leg out here, but still, I'm just about parallel, if not just a little bit lower. I'm not really targeting these muscles as much as I could in an elevated position. So I'll show you a few. Uh, you can use dumbbells, kettlebells, offset dumbbells, whatever you feel like. One foot up here. I'm gonna be up on my toe, and what I like to think about is going straight up and down, so I'm not gonna rock forward and backward. So I'm gonna get in the static lunge position, line everything up, I'm going to drop straight down, start shallow if you have to, and then drive straight up with my both, uh, using both legs evenly. I'm going to switch sides this one. Balance. So my other hamstring is not bigger than this one. So let's just do a little stretching to kind of finish off our workout here. There's a bunch of ways to stretch the uh, posterior chain. Uh, I've showed the one where you can lie on their back with the strap and do the hamstring. You can also stretch the rotators, which are the deep glute muscles, with the leg up on a table, kind of rocking back like this and contract and relax. You can do it on the ground as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit and I'm going to bring my front knee excuse me, my front foot towards my back knee. I'm going to square up my body. I'm just going to tighten up. Lean forward a little bit. Just rocking forward. So I'm going to try to elongate, get a little bit more each time as I come out, just kind of wave out of everything. And just kind of go with your own uh, imagination on this. You can go a little bit off to the side. Just make sure your knee joints don't bug you. I'm just going to get the deep glute muscles in here. You can stretch off to the side a little bit here. Just kind of sh showing some small oscillations. Um, I like stretching out this way. You can get your hip flexor in here too a little bit. So the hip flexor is going to be the counteracting muscle of the glutes. So just keeping that nice and loose, it won't get hyperactive and inhibit your glutes for working. So just going to stretch out there a little bit. side and you do the same thing there, waving forward, a little bit to the side, a little bit across, this one's a little bit tight, I'll go back a little bit, rest on my forearm, stretch out my hip, stretching and your uh, rotator stretching 
and that uh, should keep your posterior chain strong and supple.